Hey everyone, welcome back to Cars and Zebras TV. Cars and Zebras. <laughs> We've got a hot race coming, but first, let's take a call from one of our viewers. Hello? Hey there, you're on Cars and Zebras TV. Yeah, Cars and Zebras, I just wanted to say that you're a total d**kbag and you should just cut right to the race. Oop, looks like we accidentally lost that call. Let's take another one. Hey, C and Z, I agree with the last caller. You are a d**kbag and you should eat sh**. Whoa, looks like we accidentally lost that one as well. Let's take one last phone call. Cars and Zebras, I just wanted to say that I think you're great. Well, thank you. Great at being a dick bag. <laughs> Ooh, another happy customer. 1970 Pontiac GTO. The Judge. And in this video, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> I would like to present to the court Exhibit A. This is a 400 cubic inch V8, specifically of the Ram Air 4 variety. Compression ratio is 10 and a half to one. Torque was listed at 445 pound feet and horsepower was rated 370. But do you want to know the truth? You can't handle the truth. With proper tuning, this thing could easily make over 400 horsepower. Inside, you'll find a four-speed manual transmission, but an automatic was also available. And some people might say that they aren't a big fan of green interiors, but you know what? I'm not gonna be judgmental. <laughs> I actually really do like green interiors. I think it's awesome. I don't know what rear gears are in this car, but from the factory, a Judge Ram Air 4 would come with a 390 set and 433 were optional. Some of you might have an objection to that, but you know what I say? Overruled. Due to awesomeness. That's the way you do it. Curb weight of this monster is 3,781 pounds, and I'm okay with that because I generally like my cars a little bit thick. Mm, you have the right to remain sexy. Motor Trend Magazine tested a Ram Air 4 GTO in June of 1970, and with a little bit of tuning, they were able to run 13.87 seconds at 103.42 miles per hour. They didn't make very many Ram Air 4 GTOs equipped with a 4 speed in 1970, only 627 total, but lucky for you guys, you get to witness one. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. 1969 Dodge Super B, and this car has got me completely buzzed. I get <laughs> no, 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 not that type of buzzed. This type of buzzed. Bzz. And that's because this is an A12 car, meaning a heavy duty radiator, 15 by 6 black steel wheels, G70 15 redline tires, an S15 police handling package, an ultra cool fiberglass liftoff hood, and oh yeah, did I forget to mention? A 446 pack with three Holly two barrel carburetors rated at 1,350 CFM total, a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1. And this monster was rated 390 horsepower and 490 pound feet of torque. Ooh, that's got a sting. <laughs> you could get a four speed manual transmission in the Super B A12, but if you wanted the best consistency while drag racing, then you had to be like this car and get that ultra reliable torque flight three speed automatic. Out back, you could get any gear ratio you wanted as long as it was a 410 set. That's all these cars came with, 410 gears. Not to mention it was housed in an ultra strong Dana 60. Even though these are fairly big cars, the curb weight really wasn't that bad. It was only 3,580 pounds and that gives a 200 pound advantage to the Super B. There were a few different magazines that tested out the Super B A12 and High Rod got a hold of one in August of 1969. They ran 13.56 seconds at 105 miles per hour. But around that same time, Ronnie Sox took a completely stock Roadrunner A12 and he ran 12.91 seconds at 111 miles per hour. The Super B A12 was a pretty rare car. There were only 1,487 hardtops produced and only 661 of those had automatic transmissions. I should mention that at this point in the event, it is a single heads up race only. So if you lose, you're going home. Conditions were as follows. Temperature was 70 degrees, humidity 20%, elevation 754 feet, and barometric pressure was 29.35 inches. Let's see who takes home the win.
And the Super B takes home the win, running a very impressive 11.96 seconds at 115.50 miles per hour. And in the other lane, the GTO looked great, but not quite good enough to cross the finish line first, and it ran 12.11 seconds at 114.62 miles per hour. Let's check out that race one more time. Big thanks to both of the owners for bringing out these cars. It was absolutely awesome watching them fly down the drag strip. I'll see you guys at the next one.